Hello, I will take the, uh, don't you guys have some sort of, uh, it's like the Big Mac, except bigger? The double Big Mac? Yes, the double Big Mac. I will take a double Big Mac, please. Give a double Big Mac. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another three-day fishing challenge. Uh, I thought it would be a really, really long time before I did another one of these, but I did say that if the last one got like a million views, I would do another one. So here we are. I'm eating my last meal before the 72 hour time starts. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So I got a double Big Mac. Never gotten a double Big Mac from McDonald's. And we got Twinkies, real Twinkies, Hostess Twinkies, no knockoffs. These are the real McCoy. This is the fattiest meal I could have, I could think of before we went three days eating only what we could catch. Mm. Oh yeah. So as you can see there, we're 72 hours. Time starts now. This is the last thing I'll be eating for the next 72 hours. I started this challenge in the evening so that we'd have three whole days to fish and do stuff. So I'm gonna go home, get some shut eye. I'll see you guys tomorrow for first morning of fishing. though last three-day challenge I thought it'd be easy so I, I learned my lesson from the last one how hard it turned out being oh man this force looks good looks good to like forge and find stuff this time though I'm, I'm more humble to start out but I am very excited to do this so we have three fun things first of all we're gonna fish this morning for our breakfast we're on a lake here and uh, we're gonna fish this morning we're gonna kind of forge around and explore and uh and also get to cook up and one of my favorite things explore new spots so i have never been to this spot before in my life this is a good looking spot to start out at i'm just gonna walk around this cove make my way around the bank probably gonna stop off at all these little points and stuff and just start fishing the rules of the game today guys i cannot keep bluegill. Bluegill are completely off limits um, in terms of eating them. The reason why that is, is bluegill are so prolific. There are millions of them everywhere and they're dumb as dirt. You can, you can catch, I, I could come out here in the morning and catch like a hundred, put them all in a bucket and I could just eat on those all the time. And the challenge wouldn't be any really challenge at all. So bluegill are off limits, but some of the things that we could catch include largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass, crappie, perch, um, white bass. They have a hybrid bass in here that I heard are really good. Striped bass, white bass. Um, we catch frogs, crayfish, salamanders, turtles, um, anything like that. Um, I'm just, oh, I would love to catch a turtle actually. So we're gonna try every different kind of thing. We're just gonna scavenge around in the forest. There's a beautiful forest behind me right here. And uh, we'll scavenge around there, see what's uh see if there's any possibilities that way and so we just have a lot of fun options this is going to be fun three days so check this point out you got uh, the cove back in there and we kind of it's kind of opening up into the main lake I have some good rocks down here i'm just going to fish all along this rock point here with some bass lure see if we can score a bass Great big rock. Guys, this is so fantastic. 
so fantastic. So I got my big bucket here. We're just gonna drop in the bucket. Put a little water in the bottom there. Got our first crawdad. Let's find some more. We'll alternately fish and look for crawdads. We're just gonna work our way all down this bank. Oh, stirred up. Oh, there's one. Yep, yep. Little guy. This is a bait size one right here, folks. Look at that little tyke. Bait size. That's two. My friends, it's crawdad time. Oh, take my socks and shoes off so I can kind of wade around better. Got to wear these shoes all day so I don't want to get them wet. All right, let's get this bad boy in. Hopefully he's still under there. Oh, yeah, there he is. Boy, why don't you all save these Tennessee crawfish? They are quick. They are, are real speedy. Look at that little tiny crawdad. Guys, is that not the most perfect bait size crawdad you've ever seen? So I, hopefully their crawdads get bigger here because I want to eat some too, but we at least, at least have bait. Whoa, anything under this huge rock. Yep, there's a nice crawdad. There's a nice crawdad. That's an eating size one. That ain't a bait size one. Come here, you. There we go, number four, guys. Yes. There we go, another one. They're all really little, though. I mean, which is great for bait, but you can't really eat them, guys. All right, here is our catch, folks. This is interesting. I don't know if this is just the way Tennessee crawfish are, or maybe I was just unlucky. But look how tiny, except for this one. But I mean, even this one is small um, compared to like Idaho crawdads. And I mean, most of these, I mean, that's perfect bait size. But as far as eating them, unless we get some bigger ones. But we have five of them in there, and so we got some good bait. Let's keep fishing. So check this out, guys. Got a small little red worm there with a bobber set up. Going real old fashioned. I just want to catch a food fish because I'm really hungry right now. Just want to catch like a perch or crappie or a, maybe a rock bass, something like that for, uh, for some food. And then we'll have fun a little bit later fishing with our bucket of crawdads and kind of going after some bigger stuff. Might even catch some, like some bluegill to use for bait on, and kind of just go after a really big fish. But right now I just want like a food fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got one, got one. Uh, it's small. Oh, it's a, it's a bluegill. Shoot, little monster. You are not part of this challenge. Actually, that's not a bad bait size. You yeah, know what, guys, we might have catfish bait there. Well, foraging for bait is going extremely well. All right, my friends, I know I just said I was gonna save the crawdads for later, but I can't help it. Look at that little guy. So I've got him on the hook there on the same bobber setup we had before. Let's try it all along these juicy looking rocks here. Ooh, either something's messing with it or that crawdad is on the bottom. Yeah, see, something has it. Oh, uh, you know, I think the crawdad might have found the bottom because my bobber went over, went under real slowly. Gotta get him out there farther. <laughs> Guys, check it out. Crankbait, snagged. Oh, he snagged good. Right on the rock there, get it out of that. <laughs> that is fantastic. Red crankbait. Not like Strike King or I'm not sure what that brand is actually to tell you the truth, but I'm gonna keep my eye out for more. Who knows? Might find a lot when the water goes up and down so much. You can score sometimes. Sweet. We're gonna throw on this crankbait. I figure if locals were using it, there's a good chance it's a good bait choice. So let's tie this on, throw this around. It casts well. Well guys, here's a summary of the whole morning. Um, nothing, zero, zip. I mean, besides the stupid bluegill. Um, I fish a live crawdad, a live, live, lively crawdad with no claws for over an hour, like an hour and a half, two hours on a bobber. You would think, and no bites, literally zero. Mm. No bites on a live crawdad. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch lakes because this is stupid when the fishing is this insanely slow. And I've moved, like I am I am miles away from where I started. I keep moving points and stuff. 
what kind of fish don't eat a live crawdad on a bobber? With no claws, I, I took the claws of the crawdad off. Almost 15 hours into this challenge and I've not caught a single thing worth keeping yet. 12, almost one o'clock in the afternoon. Unreal. I saw something from the shore. We got a backpack here. Is it stolen? Stolen? No, it was probably in the lake. Yeah, it looks like it was in the lake. Oh, it's filled with ants. Must have had some food in it. I think literally got, oh my gosh. Ants have made their home in it, I think. This is literally now an ant nest. We'll, uh, we'll leave that right there. There are millions of ants in there. Crazy. All right, folks, we're back. We're back. So I took a minute, actually an hour or two, calm down. Got something to drink, went to McDonald's. Oh, no, just kidding, I didn't go to McDonald's. But I'm glad I'm not crazy. By the way, this little spot looks really good. Anyway, I'm glad I'm not crazy because other fishermen, every fisherman I've talked to actually has said the fishing is awful. One guy fished all morning, he said he caught two. He was in a boat. The other guy I just talked to, he said he caught one. Uh, another guy said he didn't catch any bass, he just like snagged into a drum. So, it's not that I'm a total goober out here. It's that uh, the fishing really is tough. So we've got night crawlers, and I think I'm just gonna go full on night crawler for the next while to see if we can get any kind of just eating fish at all. What the, whoa, 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 guys, look at this. Look at this. That crawdad has a baby crawdad in his claws. He's just been mangling him. Ugh. Yeah, he has a little tiny one that he just mangled. Well, there are quite a few crawdads out, but they're not the big Idaho crawdads. There are all these little tiny dinks and dunks. Maybe it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, guys, this is miserable. I am not, I'm not having fun out here anymore. Fishing has lost its luster in moments like this and I keep trying all these spots and I keep yielding no fish had a big fish pull my bobber under back there uh oh uh oh got one my line got wrapped around this tree uh oh it's got me snagged the fish wrapped it around a rock got it snagged got it snagged so I don't know. This looks real interesting, but the fishing is so painfully slow that, I mean, it looks cool. Look at the boulders and stuff, but I don't trust anything anymore. Worm line out here. This is spot number, feels like 100. <laughs> but guys, it's time to bring out the big guns. Um, I've had these in here. This is the Ace Videos tackle box. If you guys haven't seen it already, I'll put a link to it in the description. These are six of my favorite colors of tubes here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these uh, little crawfish, set him there, and we're gonna look at our tubes, and let's see, I'm thinking that this is the closest color, because this is too flashy, this one is too orange, this one's just right. This is called changeable craw, actually throw him back in the bucket. I'm just, I've run out of bobbers, that's why I'm not using the, the crawdads anymore. So we're gonna use this changeable craw tube. Make sure you guys check out this box in the description. When crawdads are, are blue, we have a blue one there. They're, sometimes they're that blue-green color. Sometimes they're that real orange color. I'll put a link in the description. It's my very own tackle line. First cast of the day with the tube. Oh look, got one. Guys, I got a fish. I got a fish. I got a fish. What's it? I think it's a bass. Yep, it's a bass. Oh my goodness, that feels good. That feels so good. Oh, not a giant. Let's see. Let's check the time real quick. Holy mackerel. Five, almost six o'clock. Oh, I haven't eaten in 20 hours. Don't tell me. That's... Is this a spotted bass? If it is a spotted bass, there's no size limit on these in this lake. We'll be eating if it is. No, that's a large mouth, isn't it? Gosh. I 
really want to eat this. I could eat it raw, like Smeagol. Well, guys, it was uh, wishful thinking, but uh, that's definitely not a spotted bass. Um, <laughs> they have to be 14 inches or more to keep. This guy's probably about 11 and a half, my guess. It feels good to get a fish, though, but I feel kind of bad letting him go. Let's get another one. Maybe it's a hot evening bite. Well, folks, here's what we got. Unless something magical happens in the next like 10 or 15 minutes, it looks like I'm gonna be going the first 24 hours without eating anything. Uh, actually, it's gonna be way more than that because I started at night and I have to sleep all night. So it's gonna be more like the first 30 hours are gonna be without eating anything. This is shaping up exactly like that Hawaii one. I thought the Hawaiian one was just a fluke. You know, I thought, okay, bad weather, a little bit of bad luck. And it turns out that this one is even worse so far than the Hawaii one. This is just, I can't believe it. I cannot believe I fished all day. I fished hard all day for two, I just got a bite. Did you see that? The camera probably picked that up. It was a small bite, but they, I've been getting small bites. But everything that's gone wrong, like just snags. I feel like I've lost like $200 worth of tackle today on these rocks. Um, small bites, look look at that, see that? You guys see that? It's probably a bluegill. Yeah, look, that's like the machine gun bite. Technically, your human body can go for like seven days without food, so I can do it. It's just a matter of like, why is this so hard? Like this is this is just so stupid that, that this is this hard. I come to Tennessee for great fishing. That's why I came here for great fishing. And then this happens. So anyway, we're done with this lake. This is the last few casts here. Tomorrow's a fresh day. Tomorrow's a fresh day. I'll just, nobody better say anything bad to me this evening or I'm gonna bite their head off. <laughs> anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Wait, never mind. See that bite? Look at this bite. Look at this bite. Come on, please, 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 please. I beg of you. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up, baby. Pick it up. It's a bluegill. I am on this road because I believe that it ends in a fishing spot. The creek off to the side here has no water in it, but uh, there should be a bigger creek up ahead. This is getting kind of cool. We are, we're in the countryside. I've driven for about an hour this morning, woke up really early, drove about an hour into the, toward East Tennessee, and, uh, and now on this back road trying to find a fishing spot to this creek. Oh, this is interesting. There's a fisherman right here. This creek is what I wanted to come to. Look at this gorgeous country out here. Any good fishing down here? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good one. Okay. At least, I mean, it's a, it's a great small mouth stream. That's what I saw online, so I was it like, is I just... All right, guys, I just got done talking to a very nice gentleman named Mr. Herbie, who lives around here, fishes this creek all the time. He said it is absolutely loaded with smallmouth, really big small. He said he, he kept like 22 inches, 20 inches. He said this is one of the premier smallmouth creeks in Tennessee. And he also said that rock bass fishing is really, oh, he's fishing right down there. He said the rock bass fishing is amazing. And the thing about rock bass is if we can get one of those, uh, there's no size limit to them, so we can eat them. Look, check this out. The river was so high that it swept over the road. Look at like all the debris right over there. Look at the debris right here. Can you, I cannot even imagine the river being so high that it swept over the road. He said they had an insane amount of rain um, this spring. It was super high. Oh man, this looks so good. Uh, he said, just find anywhere along the shore, anywhere, he said, he said, you can just wade the whole thing. You can float it, you can do whatever and just, just throw small plastics. Um, I've got this fishing right here. <laughs> I'm excited. 
<sighs> okay, we got this fisherman right here. We got a small green tube. He said green is the main color. This has some blue on the tips of it. See the blue tips? Um, we'll see if that works here. Look how shallow though this creek is. But he said in all the little holes and stuff, there are smallmouth and rock bass hanging out. He said you can also catch crappie sometimes. So let's get fishing. Look, look, at, look at this pile of wood. Like if I want to have a fire, we'd be golden. Look at that. Look at that hole right down there. Just make our way down. My stomach has done the thing, the same thing that it did the last three-day challenge, um, where I haven't eaten anything for like 30 hours, but it's asleep. Um, my body has dug into its fat stores, and we are uh, we are good. Check out that lay down that tree right in the water. That's where we're gonna take our very first cast, right there. Check this out, guys. This is a. Uh, Sassafras. I was about to say succotash. I was like, that's not right. This is called sassafras. Look at the leaves like that. It's a three prong leaf. And then some of them look like little mittens. Like that one right there. So some of them have three like that. Some of them look like mittens. And this is actually a good flavoring thing I learned. We're going to pick some of this. So when we catch a fish, hopefully, we can flavor our fish. Yeah, it's like a mitten or something like that. That's the idea. Got to pick ones without bird poop on them, of course. There we go. We got some leaves for uh, the fish we're about to catch. I just scared a smallmouth when I came to this spot. Scared him away. Dang it. He was right up on the bank. <gasps> got one. Right. Yes, I got a fish. Oh, first fish of the day. Oh, it's a small eel. Yeah. <laughs> tighten my drag a little bit. Maybe that was too loose. Oh, oh, get out of that tree. Get out of that tree. Get out of that tree. Oh, dang it, dang it, dang it. He's out of the tree. Whoa. Oh, shoot. Get out of there. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes. Folks. Wait, let me grab him. Yes, folks, my first fish. Oh, that feels so good. Look at that red eye on him. Oh, he's mad. River smallmouth, folks. We are cooking up this, dude. 100%. Oh, it feels good on that dry creek tube right there on a little jig head. You want to see something crazy, folks? 35 hours left. That means 37 hours almost without eating anything we're going on the 37th hour i think my math is right without eating anything this is the first real fish oh that feels good since we got a little spot here i'm not going to stop to cook up that guy i'm actually going to fish basically while the fish are active try to get a couple more for a real nice meal oh getting a bite getting a bite take it come on oh he has it. Got him. Oh, it's a little squirt. Ooh, but oh, my my back reel is my anti back reel is broken on this rod. Hopefully that doesn't cost me later. I'm all for eating most things that I catch, but uh, that's not more than a couple mouthfuls. Oh, there's the decision. Well, we may have to go rescue a fish, folks. Where are you, little squeak? There he is. Oh, there he is. Holy mackerel, that was a big bird that flew by. Oh, that is, that's like a vulture or something. Maybe he's eyeballing me. I'm too skinny. Got him. Got him. Yes. Oh, he's tangled up in some weeds. Shoot. Get out of there. Oh, shoot. He's tangled up. He's tangled up. He got a, oh, it's a tiny one. Oh, boys. You know what? <laughs> oh, folks. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm eating this guy, to tell you the truth. I've never eaten a bass this small before. Like, what, seven, eight inches? But uh, we'll get some meat off of him. Oh, my goodness. I've never been so excited to catch two small bass before. 
This spot looks juicy. Right over behind a rock up there. Got one, got one, right in the fast stuff. Right in the fast stuff, yes. Yes, right behind a big rock over there. Not a giant one. Yeah, definitely not a giant, but come on, please be fish number three. Yes, yes. I said when I caught a third fish, that's a little on the small side, but we'll take them. I said when I catch a third fish, I'm gonna keep it because it, um, uh, I, want, I didn't want to start eating and then just basically tease my stomach with a really small meal. I wanted to make sure I had at least, you know, at least a sizable amount of calories for, uh, before we started eating, before I got everything out, went to all that trouble. <sighs> let's, let's cook. You look at here, you got this other little creek that runs in the main creek that we were fishing at. We're gonna use this as a tabletop for our fish. Got a little spot right here to clean our fish. The sassafras is kind of wilted, but that don't matter. I tell y'all one thing I am not gonna do. Whoa, 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 look at all these minnows. Guys, minnows are coming down the stream everywhere. Look at them. I don't know why. I added, oh, there's one right there. Got one, got one, got a minnow. We're gonna use this guy for bait. I don't know why they started coming downstream. Something scared them or whatever. Looks like a tiny uh, chub or sucker, something like that. Look at that. We're gonna use this guy for bait. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, dang. We got eggs in this bass. Well, um, might eat these actually. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try eating these eggs. See how bass eggs taste? That tells me though they haven't spawned yet. They're still in this pre-spawn mode. All right, folks, there's our cleaned fish right there. Looking good, but guys, I have an idea. Watch. All right, watch this. So, hanging out in this really shallow spot are tons of bait fish. We have a waterfall. Check this out. So here's what we got, guys. We've made a fish trap. All those minnows coming down this waterfall inspired me. So what we have is a line of rocks right here. And then over there, we also have a line of rocks all pointing toward this waterfall right here. And at the bottom of the waterfall, check it out. I put my net with some rocks. And so hopefully the little minnows will just swim down here and get caught in there. I just have to go up and over and then we'll scare them all, hopefully corral them right into the fish net. Climb up this little hill here, cross over the road. They're trying to go against me. That's kind of interesting. Oh shoot. I don't know if I got any. Nothing, boys. Well, I thought that was gonna be really cool. Well, we might skip that part. <laughs> Let's get cooking. Perfect. I'm not wasting a single bite of fish. We cook this guy whole. Nothing wasted. Using my first cast seasoning. And we will add the second fish to it. I'm eating everything, guys. All of it. There we go. Not the best looking fish, definitely but I am not ungrateful. You know, with this bigger smallmouth, I'm gonna put in a little oil. This one we cut in half, like I should have done to those other two. Stick them right in there. Oh, guys, it's been a long time coming. Let's say a prayer.
it's funny I'm actually not feeling super hungry right now because it's that same thing it's like my stomach went to sleep that's what I learned in the first three-day challenge like your body tucks into its fat stores and it's good This is good. This is really good. With this bigger smallmouth, we're actually gonna try that sassafras thing. Um, like I say, never eaten it before like this. I don't know if it'll flavor them really. <laughs> That's why we just gotta keep trying new things. Looks cool. <laughs> Guys, check this out, check this out. Okay, look. I had my fish trap set up and I, it was all set up and ready, but something must have chased a whole bunch in there. I wonder if it's like an animal or, or they just migrate. Oh look, there are even some on top. We have a ton of them. We, oh my goodness, some of these rocks. Well, it worked without me having to do anything. Check that out. We have bait for days. I just, I got open a tackle shop. Either these are migrating or something scared them. I, I don't know. Don't know what it is. Good grief. Wow, folks. That is cool. Let's try some of these for bait. Guys, we're going to try the old fish eggs. Um, we're just gonna throw them right in the oil there, and then let's get crazy. Should we try a few minnows? So I got two floaters out that were like almost dead. Um, so we're just gonna stick them in the hot oil there. Using some, this is gonna be kind of funny. We're just basically making minnow chips. I'm going to flavor these with uh, <clears throat> a little bit of my seasoning there. Oops, comes out fast. There we go. And from my experience eating fish eggs in the past, they're already salty, so we're not going to salt them. In fact, they cook really, really quickly. Mmm. Now you're hungry. Save the best for last. This is dessert, folks. Minnow and fish eggs. All right. Oh, slightly blackened. Mmm. Mmm. You know, let's put this little guy over here so he doesn't get too blackened. Fish and chips. Fish chips. Fish fries. Fish fries. That's what these are. Fish fries. I didn't even know. I didn't even witness what happened. It was just like there were a bunch of minnows suddenly. I'll let him cool down a second. There's a difference between edible and good. This is just edible. That's a actually has a weird flavor to it. What the? I'm not eating that other one. It's like the after flavor. We're throwing this guy out. That is disgusting. Guys, don't eat minnows. I need some water. Guys, I've enjoyed using these tubes. The changeable craw is getting it done. I'm almost out. Make sure you guys check out my sample tackle box in the description below. Six of my favorite Dry Creek tubes. I've enjoyed using it, but I found this bobber actually in the creek. And we are all rigged up and we're going to put on one of these minnows. Do not eat these, folks. Do not eat. Oh, here's the biggest one. I think I just grabbed the biggest one. Um. Not very tasty at all. Um, I was gonna try the fish eggs, but after the uh, the minnow sampling, I wasn't feeling very adventurous anymore. There we go. We got one on a hook with a bobber. Let's see if we can get a smallie to come up and just chomp this guy. Guys, I have something. I have something. Oh my gosh. I didn't get a good hook set. Guys, I have something. I was just reeling in the minnow. And something came up and, and ate it. Oh 
Oh my gosh, this is cool. This is cool. Got to keep them above. I don't know how big it is, but I'll take anything. I was just reeling in the minnow. I was, I was about to be done. Oh, he's trying to get some trees there. No, stay out of the trees. This is cool. Use it. I caught minnows. And now I have a fish. If I can land them. Oh, there are trees over there. Stay out of the trees there, buddy. We have a s another small mouth. Nice, folks. It worked. <laughs> that is cool. We use a fish trap. Fish trap worked. And then we catch a small mouth on it. And we are definitely saving this, guys, for a little late dinner. Not Again, not a big one, but there are a lot of calories on that dude. Oh, I feel better. That was fun. Our next move, my friends, I was up at my car and this couple stopped. And they, and they live around here and uh, we start talking and within about five or ten minutes they were like hey you should come over to our property to fish we never fish it so there will be no pressure um that is the southern hospitality southern hospitality strikes again um so we're gonna head over to their place and uh, they said just come down to the gate they'll open it and uh, i'm gonna go be able to fish on some private property here all right guys so i just talked to the folks that live here again they said it is totally fun. Just drive right down to the front yard of their lovely home here. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, this is going to be a tight fit. A tight fit, tight fit for the rental car. Don't want to scrape up the rental car. We're good. We're golden. All right. Here we are. The creek is right down there, right down that little path. Folks, look at this. These people up here, thank you so much to Miss Kim, Mr. Steve. Look at this, we got wood, we got long matches, we got Duraflame fire starter, everything we need for an evening fish roast. We just have to get a few more fish. I actually came up here to my vehicle because where is it? Ah uh... <laughs> we're done with the minnows. Folks, it's top water time, guys. What a cool day. Southern hospitality strikes again. Guys, look along this fence here. Um, see all this, this, <laughs> this is all leaves and stuff that washed against here when the river flooded. It was almost all the way up to their house. Like, I mean, and then look over here. I mean, it's a cliff. I mean, it's a cliff over here all the way down. That's like a 20 foot difference in the river. I've, I've never been to a place, I didn't know actually uh, rivers fluctuated quite frankly like that. Uh, gives new meaning to the uh, classic phrase, Lord willing and the creek don't rise. <laughs> and nothing like topwater fishing. The sun is going down. We have a couple of options. I think I'm gonna go with this classic popper right there look at that bad boy guys there's some under there's an underwater tree big underwater tree i don't know if you guys can tell on the gopro but this is the juice spot right here where's my popper oh i have one Oh my gosh, I have one already. Something must have hit it right when it hit the water. Because all it, I was like, where's my popper? It snagged around the tree limb. Dang it. He snagged around the tree limb. Darn it. Get off there, boy. Dang, I don't want to ruin the, the spot, but. Yeah, he's still on, he's still on. There we go, got him out, got him out. Yes, yes. Guys, right when it hit the water. That is crazy. Like, like I was like, I went to pop my popper. I was like, where is it? I told you that was a good spot. <laughs> oh, this is the best one of the day right here. Yes. Let me tell you, folks. Let me tell you. That was crazy. And then he got wrapped around the tree. Well, we're gonna have a good dinner too. We had a good lunch. We're gonna have a good dinner as well. But first, let's catch some more while this bite is hot. Maybe store some for like tomorrow for breakfast. 
Add them to the bucket with the other one there. Let's get some more. This is, this is like stuff I dream of like as a fisherman when I was little like fishing down south, fishing, just not even down south in particular, just like fishing creeks like this for smallmouth. Fishing, like th this is all new, like territory, new waters. It's so much fun. This is what I'd rather be doing on a Saturday night. Yep, this is definitely what I'd rather be doing on a Saturday night. Did you see that bite? I don't go to bars, I don't go to lounges, I don't do I don't like parties, even, like, I don't mind get-togethers, like, I love get-togethers, actually, but I don't party, because this, topwater smallmouth fishing. Oh, missed it, missed it, missed it, he, he wants it, he wants it, he wants it, oh, guys. <laughs> two casts in a row, two, two bites. Oh, it's like they're biting it with their mouth closed. Have you guys ever had that? You, you guys have had that before probably where, they, where they're like, they're not, they're just not, uh, they're hitting it real hard, but they're not actually get it in, getting it in their mouths. I love topwater fishing, but I think I'm gonna have to switch to a Cinco if I wanna get one more fish before it gets dark because they're biting it, but they're not like, they're just kind of hitting it angrily. Which usually that means you want to throw a soft plastic then instead of a top water. That moment when you realize you have no Cinco's, so a jig will have to do. We actually might catch a, you know, one thing about jig fishing is you can catch sometimes the biggest fish of the day. Something just hit the surface right there. Got it, got one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> With the jig. With the jig. See. I love the top water, but uh, they just, I knew I should have been, so should have switched earlier. Another smallie, another small mouth bash, folks. Oh, yes. Food. Right back in there, right back in there. Daylight's fading. animal is that? Do you guys hear that? Oh, he got a... At first I thought it was like a bike, or like a, a motorcycle. No, that's an animal. What? And here we go. Well, folks, as day two comes to an end, with three fish in my bucket, a beautiful fire right on the riverside, I think we're going to be all right. One of the things that, that truly is fun about the three-day challenge, though, despite the, oops, despite the challenges, that little dirt never hurt no one. As I was saying, one of the really... Uh, see now that now the smallmouth is all wet. If I try to drop that in there now, it's gonna go crazy. Whoa! Here goes nothing, boys and girls. Wow! There we go. Got some popping fish right there, folks. Anyway, as I was saying, is uh, one of the things that is really fun about this is the heightened sense of like uh, urgency or, or um, like if, if I was just out creek fishing, say for an evening, and I caught a couple small smallmouth like this, when I went home, somebody asked, "Hey, how'd you do?" They'd be like, "Eh, all right, you know, caught a 
you small, small mouth. Or it might even be like, it's kind of poor, it's kind of slow out there. But when you got, when you're depending on it for food, it's so much more satisfying. It's just like the stakes are higher. And I would say that like sometimes when you're in it, when like when I'm in the challenge, it's like this isn't fun. But then when you're success, when I'm successful, it suddenly becomes really fun. So it's kind of like you're really high, then you're really low. I don't know. I don't know. Like in this moment, I'm really glad I did all this. But um, I don't know. When, you're, when I'm successful, I'm really happy I'm doing the three day challenges. But when uh, you go a whole uh, what was it, 40 hours without food or whatever, yeah, then, then it gets tough, but anyway. Alrighty. Hmm. Wow. The skin has a real nice crispiness to it. I think I'm gonna cook smallmouth in oil. Little tip for you guys. Cook smallmouth in oil, not in butter. Because the, the skin, I like the skin a lot better, like this. That skin right now. I'll eat every bit of this meat tonight. I should have a good night of sleep. It was a great day hanging out with you guys. Day two is definitely way better. We got day three, though, to tackle tomorrow. I'm hoping to do some other fun things, like um, maybe another f fish trap. Yeah, I'd love to do. I'd love to eat a turtle, as weird as that sounds, just because I've never done it before. I think it's too early in the year for bullfrogs here, but we definitely have, I saw some turtles today, small ones, but if we can find a spot, we're probably gonna go to a lake, a brand new lake, that's a few miles from here, fish the lake, explore the lake, so tomorrow will be a whole nother slew of adventures. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Could it be? Could it? That's not gonna work. Come on. Are you really green onions? Oh my gosh. Guys. Oh. I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a green onion to me. This is totally random that I came across this. There's a bunch of it too. Look at this. Green onion all over in the grass right by this golf course. And in fact, there's a nice looking golf course pond right there. Hmm. There's hardly anybody out here this morning. In fact, there's a, uh, I don't see anybody at the moment. You'd think they'd mind if I fished their golf course pond. Harvested a few largemouth. Look, we also have all over dandelions. And I've never done it before, but apparently, oh, there are no leaves on that one. Dandelion leaves are good to eat. Well, I don't know about good. There's a difference between edible and good. Huh. Let's see here. Let's look around a little bit. But that is totally a green or scallion, scallion green onion, is that the same thing? I'm no chef. The root is the thing that, that gives it away. Yeah, 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 guys, that's totally, I didn't, I didn't like, does green onion just grow places? <laughs> like, is this normal? I've never really paid attention until I started doing this challenge, and I have my eyes open for anything on the ground or anything that might be edible. So I think this is actually good for now. It's like kind of a really, that's a lot of, green onion there. So we're gonna take that, and then we have here the uh, the dandelions. Boy, we're getting our greens, folks. I'm just gonna harvest some dandelions while we have them here, but then let's get down to the lake. Let's get fishing. I'm excited. I kind of slept in this morning. Slept in, but I needed it. It's been two, two really long days. <laughs> All right, so here we are, folks. Brand new lake. This is cool. We're cut, we're in e we're headed toward eastern Tennessee, and so it's getting kind of mountainous, as you can kind of as you can tell. And uh, um, 
looks cool the water is high yes it's high because you can see all like the trees and the water and stuff down there there are a bunch of big birds those look like turkeys oh man turkeys wild turkey wild turkey sounds amazing <laughs> um first thing we're going to do though is so there are only like two boats here right now it's kind of crazy don't know why are there only two but um Hopefully that doesn't mean the fishing's bad. Anyway, there are only two boats here. And one of the things that you guys want to keep in mind is that when you come down to a, uh, a spot like this, when you have the launch ramp, this is actually a really nice piece of structure to fish on. I've actually caught really big bass right on the launch ramp. Man, you have to come down when days when it's not super busy, but that uh, that's actually this is actually the first spot I'm going to fish is right on the launch ramp. See this piece of structure here that goes out in the water? Bass can spawn on it. Bass can just stack up on it. It's, just, it's really good structure as long as it's not busy. And it's not busy this morning, so let's get fishing on this first. All right, guys, this is the lure I'm starting off with. Is a uh, Strike King deep dive and sexy shad crate bait, and uh, those folks right there just got done talking with them, asked them for some tit or just asked them some general stuff. They said there are a lot of spotted bass in this lake, and they said the very that very crank bait, which I just happened to tie on anyway. Um, they said is perfect for this lake, the sexy shad uh, pattern. There are a ton of places to just stop and pull off around this lake, so I'm just going to stop and pull off a bunch of different places, just fish from shore. Guys, guys, I got one! I got one! <laughs> Small, but I got one. Oh, he got off, he got off. I got a bite though, right on this, right on this piece of structure. Shoot. I, you, you see, I did, the, I did the newbie thing where I stopped to see if I had one. This crankbait puts such a, such a drag on the rod, it's kind of hard to tell between the fish and, a, and the bottom, so I paused for a second to see if there really was a fish on there. That was really stupid. Should have just kept reeling. Catching any? Heck no. Heck no, oh. Nothing. Oh, really? They're all hitting the top. Ah. Oh, you're going for crappie? Is well, that you never know, man. The bass hit, the catfish hat hit on these little jigs and whatnot. And okay. You never know, but everything I saw, I mean, there were some big ones, some big ones that were hitting the top. Mm. Well, my next spot was to go below the dam, so I might have to do that if it's tough up here. The water looks that weird, like, winter dingy kind of color. Well, I generally always get a hit on one of these suckers. Yeah. Okay. Put a little jig head yeah. weight on it. They All right. love those. Yeah. You know, this 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 crawdad is what I got a hit on this morning. Uh -huh. And it's just like, but I would I hate I hate letting it go down deep where it should be because I hate losing them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the tips. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Have you for fun. this. I will appreciate that. All right, guys, even though we did not catch anything at this spot, got a ton of good information from some local fishermen and uh, we're gonna go below the dam. Got a hot tip that the walleye are biting below the dam. Let's go. Oh, guys, this is cool stuff here below the dam this is uh, one thing that's always cool about dams is how dramatic it is like the drop man what a, what a project i can't imagine like building this thing unreal uh, guys check it out boy are they pumping some water or what this is very cool and dramatic. Look how high the water is. You guys see the trees right there that are underwater? Wow. So, trout regulations. I can keep anything under 14 inches. Never seen that before. Nothing between 14 and 20 inches. Brown trout, only one over 20. Boy, if I catch some trout that size over 20 inches, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. All right, guys. Coming down the stairs. Getting excited, this looks fun. So, this is what we're using first. The uh, shad colored crankbait here. And the reason why I'm going actually with the crankbait first instead of what was recommended is because the guy who's fishing up there said he's caught nothing but bass all morning. And obviously crankbaits are bass lures. Also, the one time I went walleye fishing, the guy I was with said that some of the biggest walleye he catches come on crankbaits. Guys, I got one, I got one. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Whoa. Uh, the third reason is some of the biggest trout I've ever caught have actually come 
when I've been um, fishing for bass with white crankbaits. Oh, did it get, it got off. Er, no, it's, or er, something small or something. What are we, dang it, yeah, no, it did get off. Guys, I literally got a bite a few seconds in. Got one, got one, guys. Got a fish. Oh, it was a trout, it was a trout. Oh, it, was a, it looked like a brown trout. Shoot. On the white crankbait, I told you guys trout, uh, some of my big, it was, a, it was a good fish too. The problem is with brown trout here, they have to be over 24 inches to keep. So even if I landed them, that, that probably wasn't 24, it wasn't that big, but it was, it was a couple of pounds. Guys, we gotta switch to the grub, switch to the grub. White grub going out, come on. Uh-oh, snag. Dang it, I don't want to lose this grub. Got one. Guys, got one. Got one. It's like a striped bass or something. Or a... Yes! Yes, 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 boys, we got lunch. What is this? Okay, we don't have striped bass or any of that stuff, I believe. Let's see, there's striper, wiper, and white bass. I think, since it has stripes, this is a striper. I don't live where these are caught, so I'm a little uh, ignorant. Let me look this up. That is so cool, I caught them on a Lucky Craft jerk bait. All right, I see striped bass or hybrid bass. Minimum length has to be 15 inches. White bass, that's what it looks like. Yeah, a white bass. Guys, I think this might be the first white bass I've ever caught. I just looked it up. And there's no minimum length on them, so we can eat this guy. This will be the very first time I've caught and cooked a white bass on my channel. Sweet. Here we go, got him on a stringer. We'll just tie it off right here. There we go, first white bass. Yes, that feels good. So guys, I'm so hungry. <sighs> so hungry that I'm going to uh, get something to eat. We're gonna eat that fish, and then we'll resume fishing. I grabbed my, my uh, what are they called, green onions. Sorry, I'm a little weak and shaky. I've been eating so long. But look, there are more green onions right here. So is this a Tennessee thing to just have like green onions growing everywhere? I mean, it must, must be. All right, this is cool. My first time eating white bass. Oh, super easy to scale. Look how the scales are just coming right off. That is so nice. So we have here a little light lunch, but at least we have lunch. And I'm gonna say this, we might catfish with this if we find a good catfishing spot. All right, so with our stuff here, we're gonna take it like this. We're gonna remove the dry bits. That cloud feels nice. Add some oil to our pan here. This is fun, this is a nice day too. And it's nice that I'm the only one here, which sometimes means the fishing is bad, but I'm having fun. I caught lunch. Oh, when that water from the fish hits the oil. Then look what we're gonna try with guys. I got this little teeny tiny bottle of Old Bay seasoning at Walmart. And I was like, I gotta try some of that. I don't think I've ever just put Old Bay straight on fish. flip it and we're, we haven't, I haven't forgotten about the uh, scallion, er, scallions and green onions same thing heck I'm guys I'm no chef whatsoever I just even though I have a catch and cook channel but uh, whatever this is we're gonna put some on it right at the end to finish it I have to say these are really fragrant they smell good 
That looks good. It's very eye-catching. I'm gonna start flipping this over. Then we're gonna add a little bit to this side as well. And then what I'm gonna do, just kinda, I'm gonna drop <laughs> some in there. I don't know, maybe cooking it just like that. I'm so hungry. Heck. I'm just gonna eat it plain like that, just slightly cooked. We'll save the dandelions for later. Did you just eat them like raw? A little bit dusty. I would clean them off in the lake or the river, but I don't think that you're just kind of trading one thing for another, so. I didn't really get a good bite. That's not gonna. They don't exactly taste like anything, to be honest. You're just like, like you're putting like a piece of raw lettuce in your mouth that doesn't taste like anything. Well, there's lunch. I'll take it. It's funny, when I smell Old Bay, I think of Oregon crabs. Ooh, that's hot. Hot metal plate. Um, I think of Oregon crabs, so I'm eating fish, but it smells exactly like those crabs do. Mmm. Mmm. Reminds me of like catfishing texture. And as far as the flavor goes, just a solid, nice fish flavor. Let's try one of these. Raw. It's good. It's good. So the final meal, I'm gonna cook up a whole bunch of that. It just needs to be like heated a little bit, kind of softened. I'm gonna use it in the, di in the final dish and just eat a whole bunch of that raw. That is really good. So, y'all want to hear the story of my day? Well, after I got done below the dam, fish, fish for quite a, probably another hour, didn't get anything. So I decided to come back above the dam, fish around the lake. This is what I'm using. We're going to live or die by the whopper plopper because you can fish it really fast or really slow. Let's see what they want. Some sort of schooling action. After that, I fished with topwaters for a little while longer. In fact, I thought there would be a really hot evening topwater bite, but uh, it was not meant to be. There are a ton of animals. Hear that? It is such a quiet night out here. It's so cool because there's no wind, so you can hear everything even on the other side of the lake. So I fished around and then it got dark on me, so I came around to this side. And now I put on some cut bait on a simple bottom rig. I'm not sure if it will be too early in the year for catfish. I wouldn't mind ending this thing with a nice big catch. I don't care what bites really at this point. Check it out. We have a frog here. It's not a big frog. Can't use a toad for bait. Look at that little guy. That's a toad. Wait. Oh my goodness, folks. It's a toad. That's not a frog. I can't use a toxic toad for bait. He's a cute little feller, though. Okay, I'll let you go. Yeah, that's a totally a toad. Toad, get it? Totally a toad. Oh, I think we'll let him go. I kind of want to keep him as a pet. Y'all want to see how much time we have left? This. This right here, folks. Less than one minute. So unless something bites in the next minute. See, and out of the corner of my... 
I don't know why that scared me. I knew it was coming. 72 hours eating on seven fish. I bought this McDonald's about an hour ago and you have no idea how hard it was not to dig in when the smell started filling my truck. In fact, just to prove to you guys, I did not eat any of it. Look, the double Big Mac is still, and the quarter pounder, still whole. Woo! Come on you, bounce. Well guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed. Never doing this again, so don't even ask. Unless of course, this video gets a million views. Then I'll have to do it again. But anyway, it should be a long time till that happens. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah.